Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I know last week a lot of you were not able to be here because of the weather, but if you did miss it, we began a new series. And this series is about our new mission and vision. It's really about who we are saying we are going to be as a church. And our new mission and vision, if you are wondering, is up there on the screen. Our new mission is to be a welcoming community, rooted in scripture, growing in faith, and proclaiming that Jesus is the way. Now I'm going to ask you all to repeat that with me really quick. Let's say it together. To be a welcoming community, rooted in scripture, growing in faith, and proclaiming Jesus is the way. And the goal of that mission is the vision, so that all will know and experience God's love. So say that with me. All will know and experience God's love. Back in November, we had a voters meeting. As a congregation, this is who we said we wanted to be. We wanted to be a welcoming community rooted in scripture, growing in faith, and proclaiming Jesus is the way. So that through us here and through the church, throughout the community and throughout the world, all will know and experience God's love. And last week, we began our series by looking at when we say we're a welcoming community, what does that mean? And, and who are we to be welcoming to? And how are we to be welcoming? And, and there were three different groups of people we talked about there with this. Now, obviously, the answer is we're welcoming to everyone. But I wanted to focus on three different groups specifically. One, we are to be welcoming to each other. That means the people who are already a part of our Savior. Who are already a part of the kingdom of God. We are to be welcoming to each other. Caring for one another. Lifting one another up in prayer. Supporting one another and encouraging one another in our faith. That means sometimes we need to break away from the groups of people we're always in. Say hello to new people who are part of this church. Get to know other people here. That's a way that we're welcoming to each other. We also talked about how we're to be welcoming to, to those people who are coming in these doors. Who are seeking something. They're seeking community. They're seeking forgiveness. They're seeking encouragement. Maybe they're seeking faith in general. They don't have faith, but they're seeking something. Well, when those people who are visiting come inside these doors, we're to be welcoming to them, greeting them, letting them know we're glad they're here, seeing if there's ways we can support them, pray for them, encourage them. And the third group were, was we are to be welcoming to our community. And when I say that, I mean basically anybody inside of our community or your personal communities that are not part of the kingdom of God. We are to be welcoming to them. And as a church, we're already doing that. We're doing that at least in some respects. We're doing that with things like the Easter egg hunt. When we do that, we're being welcoming to our community. Later today, we're going to have an opportunity to do that, be welcoming to our community through the Revive Ministry Outreach. We're going to be partnering with other churches in the area to bring the gospel of Jesus to people. But we need to be looking at how we can be more and more welcoming to our community as well. So when we say we're a welcoming community of faith, that's who we're to be welcoming to, and that's how we are to be welcoming. But today, we're really going to spend time focusing on the second part of this mission statement. We are to be a congregation who is rooted in Scripture, growing in faith. Now, we could put those two things separately and have two different sermons on each one of these things, but I, I intentionally put them together for this reason. If you're not rooted in Scripture, there's no way you can grow in faith. And if you are rooted in Scripture, then you will be growing in faith. So these two things go hand in hand. And we're going to talk about what this actually means for us as individuals, but also as a church here in this place today. And so to do that, I, I want us to actually look deeply at our gospel lesson for today. Matthew chapter 8. And if you want to follow along with that, you can go ahead and open up your Bibles and do that. It's not Matthew chapter 8, it's Matthew chapter 13. So if you want to follow along, you can do that. But here in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus is speaking to crowds of people by the Sea of Galilee. At this point in his ministry, Jesus is really popular. He, he's fed people. He's healed people. He's preached amazing sermons. And so people are coming from all over to see Jesus. And such a huge crowd comes that we're told that uh, uh, he got into a boat to preach here, to teach here. But these crowds are around him, and then he tells them this parable, the parable of the sower. And he says this, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground. 
where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. When the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So this is the parable that Jesus tells the crowds. And could you imagine how they reacted to this? I mean, this is an agrarian society. People understood how planting took place. And he's telling them nothing they don't know, right? Of course, if, there's, if the seeds don't take root or if they don't go into the soil, they're going to be eaten up. Of course, if they're in rocky soil, they're not going to grow. Of course, if they grow among thorns, it's going to be choked out. Everyone knows you have to plant seeds in good soil. Big deal, Jesus. As a matter of fact, you could probably guess a lot of people are saying, what is this guy talking about? Because any good farmer would also know, you don't just scatter seeds willy-nilly. You know where the good... I've always wanted to say that in a sermon, willy-nilly. So there you go. <laughs> but but you, you don't... You know where the good soil is. A farmer's not going to waste a seed just throwing it wherever he wants. He knows where the good soil is. So you can imagine the crowds hearing Jesus saying, well, what is he talking about? What kind of farmer is this? This guy's a failure as a farmer. Because he was speaking in in, in a parable, telling a real life story to get to something deeper. But we know the crowds were struggling with this. How do we know that? Well, because... Very next verse, verse 10, one of his disciples comes to him and says, hey, why are you speaking in parables? And Jesus goes on to say this entire thing about, well, I'm speaking in parables and they may ever be ever seeing but never perceiving, ever hearing but never understanding. So, so Jesus is acknowledging, yeah, a lot of people who heard this today didn't really get what I was going at. They didn't really get what I was trying to say. But lucky for us, in verse 18, he begins to tell us exactly what this parable means. And what's going on here is, in this parable, the seed is the word of God. And I think the word of God obviously is the Bible, but really, the word of God is Jesus. He is the word of God made flesh. So when we say the word of God, it is the gospel, it is Jesus, it is the Bible. However you want to put it, all those things encompass the word of God. That is the seed. And the soil is the hearts of the people. And Jesus talks about four different kinds of people who are represented in this parable story. And this is what he has to say about them. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. So he starts off by talking about this first thing, the, 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 the example of the, the seed that's sown along the path, the birds come up and eat the seed. And here he says, you know, there are going to be some people who hear the word of God and they just don't get it. And, and we know that, right? There are people here in the world that if you tell them you're a sinner, they don't get that. You need grace and forgiveness. They don't get that. You cannot earn salvation on your own. It's a gift from God. They don't get that. They don't even understand that. There are people out there who just don't understand the very, even as they hear the word of God, they don't understand it, they don't comprehend it. And, and, and Jesus makes it clear here, there's not even a seed of faith that's planted. It's just rooted out before anything could even happen. So that's the first group he talks about. But then he talks about the second group. As for it was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. So the second person described here is someone who hears the word of God, and they like it. They like how it sounds, and, and they even put their hope in it a little bit. But they don't understand really what the word of God is. Because when, when hard times come, they, they find that they're not rooted in God's word. They're not rooted in God's love. They're rooted in and, and the image of what they built it up to be. You know, it's, it's kind of this entire prosperity gospel type thing that we hear a lot of times, right? You hear the gospel of Jesus. God loves you. God cares for you. Jesus loves you. He cares for you. And if you follow him, your life will be great. If you follow him, you're going to be wealthy. You're going to be healthy. You're not going to have any more problems. Right? There's a lot of churches that preach that. There's a lot of Christians who believe that. 
But what happens when actually bad things happen then? What happens when, instead of being wealthy, you lose your job and you have to sell your home because you don't have any money to pay the mortgage? All of a sudden, that doesn't sound so good anymore. What happens when you've been promised health because you follow Jesus, but instead you have cancer and you're not getting better? What happens when you're supposed to solve all your relationship problems, but you still get divorced from your spouse? People hear about the love of Jesus. They like it, but when, when actual trials come, they're not rooted in the word of God. They're rooted in the, the false promises. God never promises that things are going to be easy. As a matter of fact, God promises the exact opposite. Jesus talks about how when he's being persecuted and how, how everyone's try, literally out to get Jesus, he turns to his disciples and says, I'm paraphrasing here, but he essentially thinks, hey, you think I got it bad. If they're doing this to me, you are going to have it a lot worse than I do. St. Paul writes about how, how we should expect to be persecuted. You know, being a Christian is not about having every single day of our life being rosy and sunny and lollipops and rainbows. It's about trusting in Christ in the midst of those struggles of life. But there's a lot of times where people are rooted in, in the very shallow ground of the gospel of Jesus, and they're not rooted in the actual meat of the gospel of Jesus. When, when troubles come, faith can go away. And there's that third group of people. As for it was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. Basically what Jesus is saying here is this. People hear the word of God, they know it's good, they know it sounds good, but you know what? I got a lot of problems in life, I got a lot of things to worry about, I don't have time for this right now. Or, you know, I know I like the word of God, I like the gospel of Jesus Christ, but I like my bank account a little bit more. But I, I, I like my reputation a little bit more. But I, I, I like this or that a little bit more. Basically, the, the, the thing that grows among thorns is the people who hear the word of God, like it, they think it sounds good, everything's great, but it's not as good as something else. And so the, the, the cares of the world choke out faith. But then Jesus talks about this fourth group. And he says, as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields. In one case, a hundredfold, in another 60, and another 30. Here Jesus says, hey, those who are in good soil will grow. And you know what the good soil is? The good soil is the word of God, the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. He is the good soil. His death, his resurrection, his salvation, that is the good soil. His word, not only the word of God made flesh, but the word of God put into scripture, that is the good soil. And those who are planted in Christ Jesus, those who are rooted in the word of God, they will grow in faith. And they will grow in faith in such a way to be able to trust in God in the midst of hard times. They will grow in faith in such a way to, to be able to produce a crop 100-fold, 60-fold, 30-fold by, by being able to, through the growth of faith, going out and proclaiming that Jesus is the way, which we'll talk about a lot more next week. But the, those who grow are those who are rooted in the word of God. And as the church here in this place, as our Savior Lutheran Church, we are saying, this is who we are. We are people who are rooted in Scripture. We are rooted in the word of God. We are rooted in the word made flesh. We are rooted in the written word of God. And everything that we do comes from that. Everything that we hold on to comes from him. Everything that we are as a church is informed by who he is as our Savior. And so, we are this church. That means we're not rooted in 
the bank account of the church. Now we need to be good stewards of what God has given us. I'm not going to say we don't. Of course we do. But we're not rooted in how much money we have here or how little money we have here. We're rooted in the word of God. We're not rooted in a facility. We're rooted in the word of God. We're not rooted in the teaching of a pastor or an elder or anyone else. We are rooted in the word of God. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. If here as your pastor in this place, if you start finding that I am preaching something opposite of the word of God, you better call me out. Because God's word is what leads us, not Adam's word. God's word is what guides us and holds us firm when the trials of the world come. And if I'm preaching something that is opposed to God's word or, or, or that's not from God's word, maybe it's not opposed, but it's not even from God's word, you need to call me out on that and hold me accountable. And any other teachers that we have here in this church the same way. Because we are a church that is to be rooted in God and his word, not in any other human being's word. That's who we're saying we are. That's who we want to be. That's who we're able to be because of who Christ is and what he has done for us. And that's why it's so important for us to be a part of community. That's why it's important to be welcomed here and be welcoming. Because as we come here together as a community, we hear the word of God and we are reminded of the word of God on Sunday mornings and every other time when we're here, we are reminded of the root that we have is Christ Jesus. That's why it's so important for you to be involved in a Bible study, whether it be here on Sunday mornings or Tuesdays or Fridays or growth groups, be involved in a Bible study because as you're involved in a Bible study, you're the word of God is growing you. That's why it's so important for us uh, to come together and, and to, to sing together and worship together. In all these things, we are being reminded of who we are in Christ Jesus. And we are being rooted deeper and deeper in the word of God. So I want to challenge you. I gave you a challenge last week. I'm going to give you a challenge again this week. For those, I'm going to give you a double challenge because I'm going to remind, a lot of you weren't here last week. And that's not, that's not meant to call anyone out. A lot of people weren't here because of the weather last week. But I'm going to share that challenge from last week with you and the new one for this week as well. First of all, to be a welcoming community, say, say hi to someone you don't know. It's very simple. Say hello to somebody in this church you do not recognize or know. And if you go to fellowship sometime, don't just go to the same group of people you always spend time with. Try to branch out and say hello to somebody else here in this church. But as far as the challenge for today, I want to challenge you to do this. Get in God's word. Get in God's word, whether it's in a Bible study or a growth group, get into God's word. And if you don't know how to do that and you don't have time to come to a Bible study, we have a four-week reading plan that we put out every single month that gives you a short, maybe 20 verses a day to look at, but it gets you into God's word. Do that. Take this next month to be in God's word because as we're in his word, we become ingrained deeper and deeper in the love of Christ Jesus and he grows us more and more in our faith. So we, as a church, are to be a welcoming community rooted in the good soil of the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. And as we are rooted in that good soil, he grows us in our faith. Amen. And now, may the sower of faith, Jesus Christ our Lord, be with you as you serve him as you love one another, and as you get into his word. Amen.